In this video I'm going to show how to update an existing record in Firebase from a Jetpack Compose application. Now I've actually already done a lot of this work. There's only a small amount I need to do in this video. So let me start by just reviewing what we have already done and why it's related. I'm going to focus on the main activity in the view model classes in this class diagram. Note that the main view model has an attribute called specimens, and look closely at the type here. It's mutable live data that contains a list of specimens. So live data means that it can be observed, and Jetpack Compose can observe this or watch it for changes and then react. Mutable means that it can be changed, and it is holding a list of specimen objects. Now if we go down and take a look at the listen to specimens function, we see that we are hooking this up to a collection called specimens in Firebase, and we're listening for changes to that specimens collection. When we're notified from Firebase that something has changed, we receive a collection of the documents that have changed, and we add them to a local variable called all specimens, and then we take that all specimens variable, and we assign it as the value of our specimens live data object. So note this entire time we're dealing with specimen as an object. Now to our main activity, notice that we are observing on that specimen's live data and we're doing a special observe that's ideal for Jetpack Compose and that is observe as state because Jetpack Compose is really looking at state changes. So when that updates, it's going to invoke our specimen facts function and it's going to tell Jetpack Compose to recompose the user interface. One of the things that specimen facts will eventually call is the specimen spinner, which is a drop down at the top of our user interface. Take a look at this, and you note that our drop down menu item, look at what we're using to create the drop down menu item. We're using that very same collection of specimens. And for each specimen in that collection, we're adding an on click function, which should activate if the user clicks on that specimen in our dropdown and note that what we're doing is we're saving the specimen that the user clicked on into a variable called selected specimen. Let's take a look at selected specimen and we see that that is a variable with a kind of funny construction here. It's a mutable state of specimen. Let's have the IDE help us out here. If I mouse over this you can see that the data type here is specimen not string, but specimen. So this is holding a specimen object, not just the text that the user selected, but the actual object that's represented by that text. Now mutable state of means we're using a delegate pattern to say, okay, let me know when this changes so that Jetpack can do a recompose. Nonetheless, I do want to point, I just want to reemphasize that this is actually the specimen object that the user selected. For example, I click and let's choose Red Maple, a lovely plant, University of Cincinnati, Teacher's Dyer Hall. Note what happens when I click that. The on-click function that we defined in our drop-down menu activates. But here's the cool part. Let's take a look at the specimen object. If we just mouse over it for a moment, we can see that we are selecting the entire specimen object all of the attributes of the object, not just what appears in that dropdown. But here's the very important part. Look at the specimen ID. Remember a couple letters from that. So maybe it begins with, looks like an I, Y, K, K, E, or something like that. Back to Firebase, and guess what? That's our unique identifier for this object within Firebase. That's very important, and let's remember how that happened. Well, when I saved the specimen initially through our view model, I did a bit of conditional logic here. I said, is the specimen ID null or is it empty? If so, we have a new specimen. Let's create a new empty document first. That will generate a unique ID. Then we can take that unique ID and we can store it in the specimen ID attribute of our specimen object. And then we can save that entire object to Firebase. That way, when we retrieve the object, we know what its unique ID is. Now, on the other hand, if the specimen ID is not null, we're going to come to this else part, and I'll go ahead and snap a breakpoint here because I have a hunch we're going to need this in a moment. And that says, okay, don't generate a new document for me. Let's go ahead and update this existing document. So really, the difference between an insert and an update is largely handled by Firebase for us. We just have to know 
how to trigger it, and we trigger it either by not passing a unique identifier or passing a unique identifier. If we don't pass a unique identifier, we get a new row. If we pass a unique identifier and Firebase recognizes that, then it updates an existing row. If we pass a unique identifier and Firebase does not recognize that, then Firebase will create a new document for us with that unique identifier. So that's really the key to insert versus update. And I'll go ahead and let this resume. If we take a look at the main activity, there's a change I need to make on that save button. Take a look at line 197 and you see every time I press save, I'm creating a new specimen object and therefore it's not going to have that unique identifier. So this is what I need to change. Instead of creating new each time, let's just activate this apply function on the selected specimen. And all of this apply logic still exists. We are simply updating each of its attributes from what the user sees in the user interface or what the user typed in the user interface. Now let's pass that selected specimen to the save function of the view model. I've redeployed the application. Let's go ahead and pick our red maple again and note that our selected specimen logic is firing because I've selected that from the dropdown. Once again, we can mouse over and take a look and we see red maple, a lovely plant, University of Cincinnati, Teachers Dyer Hall. We see the specimen ID, so on and so forth. I'll go ahead and continue. Let's change this to UCCECH, Teachers Dyer Hall. Just for example, change, change something like that. And now I'm going to choose save. Of course, I have several breakpoints set here. So we can see now on my save function in the on click for that button, we see that we have our red maple lovely plant and it has the old value now because we've not yet updated that. That's what the apply will do. It's going to take what we've typed into our Jetpack Compose user interface and it's going to put that into each of these attributes of our selected specimen. So we can walk through this one line at a time if we wish. We see that we go to save and now take a look at where we've landed. We're within the main view model and we're in the save function here, but take a look at the else part. Note that we are in the else part because it says, okay, I already know what your unique identifier is. It's probably hard to see right there, but we see that IYKKER06 loft, so on and so forth. So it says, okay, this is the document that I want to deal with. So we'll go ahead and step over. And now it's going to save or update that document into Firebase. And we'll go ahead and continue. We take a look at Firebase and almost instantaneously UCCECH Teacher's Dire Hall. Note that it updated our existing record with that same specimen ID. Um, and it did not actually create a new record. Now I do note that I have a little housekeeping that I do need to persist the plant ID and the plant name because it looks like I lost that, but that's not related to what I'm showing here. So I'll clean that up a little bit later. Also interesting is that you note that our dropdown has updated as well because we're using Compose with live data. So as soon as it changes on Firebase, it updates on our user interface as well. Now I'm just going to do a quick fix on that plant. What I'm doing here is in the on click on the spinner where I have the specimens. All the specimen really wants to know about is the plant ID and the plant name. So I'm just updating the selected plant with that common name of the plant name and updating the plant ID. That will fix that data that we lost. With that, let's try this once again, but I'm gonna try it without breakpoints on so we can see it in real time. And while I had the video paused, I went ahead and added back our red maple to this specimen. Let's change this back to the original location, University of Cincinnati, Teacher's Dire Hall, and I choose Save. And you see almost instantaneously the location updates over here in Firebase. And one funny thing I noticed, the label on our dropdown doesn't change, but if I click down, we see Red Maple, a lovely plant, University of Cincinnati, Teacher's Dire Hall. That does change, and when I select it, this label does indeed update. So you see, we have very good synchronization between our Jetpack Compose application and Firebase, and most importantly, we're able to select records in Firebase in our Jetpack Compose application, and then update those records without creating new. Now, there is one secret, though, that I have not answered. 
Okay, we can update records that already exist, but what about creating a brand new record altogether? Well, we are going to have to do that, and we're going to have to do a little trick for that. We're going to need to make a special row in this drop-down just for adding a new specimen. I'm going to do that along with a grand refactor of where we're holding this specimen, and we'll take care of that in the next video. So in this video, we've seen how to update rows in Firebase with our Jetpack Compose application by using the same document ID. I hope this video was helpful, and as always, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.